In the next few videos, we're going to cover kinetics. This video is going to start by introducing reaction rate as well as the reaction coordinate diagram. So to begin, reaction rate can be defined as the rate at which reactants are converted to product, which makes sense, right? Reaction rate, how fast your reaction is proceeding. The reaction rate can be determined by measuring either the rate of product production or the rate of reactant consumption. Both of these tell us the same information, how fast the reaction is proceeding. So to come up with an equation for this, we can take a look at an example where we have one molecule of nitrogen reacting with three molecules of hydrogen to form two molecules of ammonia. We can write some expressions for the reaction rate. This is one expression. This is looking at the rate of ammonia production. So I'm looking at the change in concentration of ammonia over time, and I'm also dividing by the stoichiometric coefficient. So with this expression, the faster ammonia is being produced, the greater this concentration will change over time. Now, there's some other expressions I could also write. I can use negative one over one, change in concentration, of nitrogen over time. So here, instead of looking at a product being formed, I'm looking at the rate at which one of our reactants, nitrogen, is being consumed. And you're going to note here that we have a negative sign. And the reason why we have a negative sign is because the reaction rate is always reported as a positive value. But when you look at the change in concentration of nitrogen over time, you're going to get a negative value because the amount of nitrogen is decreasing. So when we're writing the expression for the reaction rate, make sure to add a negative sign for reactants because the reactant concentrations are decreasing. All right. So these are two different ways we can measure the reaction rate, look at how fast ammonia is being produced and how fast nitrogen is being consumed. You can also look at how fast hydrogen is being consumed. Now, if you look at this reaction alone, you might think, hey, that wouldn't give me the same reaction rate because for every step of the reaction, I need one molecule of nitrogen and three molecules of hydrogen. So hydrogen molecules are going to be consumed three times faster. However, it's not like your reaction is proceeding three times faster when you're measuring how fast hydrogen is being consumed compared to nitrogen being consumed. And the way we correct for that is by dividing by the stoichiometric coefficients. So you can see nitrogen stoichiometric coefficient is one, hydrogen stoichiometric coefficient is three. As we discussed, hydrogen is going to be consumed three times faster. But when you divide by its stoichiometric coefficient, it allows you to attain the same reaction rate regardless of which reactant or product you're measuring. So similarly here for ammonia, we also divide by its stoichiometric coefficient of two. So that's why measuring any of these three will give us the same reaction rate, which should be the case because they're all part of the same reaction. All right, so here we divide by the stoichiometric coefficient. So we attain the same rate regardless of the reactant or product being measured. All right, so that's reaction rate as well as how to write expressions to calculate what is the reaction rate of a reaction. And using this information, it'll give you actual numerical values like your reactions proceeding at two molar per second or half a molar per second and so forth. 
The other topic we want to discuss in this video is the reaction coordinate diagram. The reaction coordinate diagram essentially shows us the energy of our molecules during the course of a chemical reaction. Now, within this reaction coordinate diagram, there are several key parts that we want to take note of. So first of all, at the beginning of the reaction, we have our reactants. At the end of the reaction, we have our products. So we can take note here. R notes our reactants. P denote our products. And we can start first by looking at this reaction and we can actually compare the energy of the reactants and the energy of the products. When we compare this difference, this will give us the change in energy of the reaction. And we can see during this reaction, our reactants absorb energy to form products. So this reaction is endergonic, right? This is the change in energy between the reactants and the products. Now, in addition to just the start and as well as the end, we also have other points within our reaction coordinate diagram. At the peaks, we have TS. TS stands for the transition state. The transition state is also known as the activated complex. Transition state slash activated complex. One thing that's important to know about the transition state is, of course, to realize that it is at an extremely high energy level. And because it's at an extremely high energy level, it's extremely unstable. And basically, it, it's not an actual molecule that is formed. It's just something in between the reactant and the next compound being formed. And because it's there for such a short period of time, the transition state slash activated complex is not something that can actually be detected during the course of the reaction. Now, in this case, our reaction actually is not a one-step reaction, it's a two-step reaction. And because it's a two-step reaction, we can see we have a valley here with I, which is called the intermediate. The intermediate is also fairly unstable. It's not a very stable molecule, but because it's an actual molecule, sometimes it can actually be isolated. So in contrast to the transition state, the intermediate is found in a valley on the reaction coordinate diagram as opposed to a maximum value on one of these crests on our reaction coordinate diagram. Other terms that are important also include the activation energy. The activation energy is the amount of energy required for each step of the reaction. This is denoted by EA, and here I'm writing EA1. This is the activation energy for the first step of the reaction. In order for my reactants to complete the first step and form the intermediates, the reactants have to absorb this much energy in order to reach the energy of the transition state. And then for our second step, we also have an activation energy, and you can see it's substantially lower. So much less energy is required for the second step of this reaction to proceed. So EA is the activation energy, which I do want to define. This is the energy required for the reaction to proceed. Another important concept of activation energy is that activation energy is related to the rate of the reaction. And the two are actually inversely related. So we can say here that the reaction rate is inversely proportional to the activation energy. So when we look at these two steps, it doesn't mean that these two steps have the same reaction rate. In fact, because they have different activation energies, one of the steps is going to be the slower step and the other step is going to be the faster step. And in particular, in this case, 
This step with the greater activation energy is slower, so it's also what we call the RDS, the rate determining step, or sometimes also called the rate limiting step. Rate determining step. Within a reaction that takes place in multiple steps, the rate determining step is the slowest step and is the step that determines the rate of the overall reaction. All right, so the last thing I want to discuss then is the catalyst. When we're talking about kinetics, we're looking at how fast reactions proceed. And catalysts are compounds that can be added to a reaction to increase the reaction rate. And the way a catalyst works is that catalysts will lower the activation energy of a reaction. So in this case, this path that's drawn is the amount of energy required without a catalyst. When we add a catalyst, we introduced a new path. And with this new path, we also have a lower activation energy. So this is the activation energy of the first step in the presence of a catalyst. So here, for the catalyst, this increases the rate of the reaction by lowering the activation energy. Now, something that's important about catalysts for the MCAT is you should know that catalysts are not net consumed or produced during the reaction, which means whatever amount of catalyst you add at the beginning of the reaction, that's going to be the same amount of catalyst that you have at the end of the reaction. So in other words, we often say that catalysts are recycled during the reaction. All right, so those are the different components of the reaction coordinate diagram.